The real-time real estate segment today being brought to you by rsrmoney.com, rsrmoney.com. Great app. Monitor your credit score. Monitor your uh, bank accounts, asset accounts. The value of your property. Yeah, it's going to give you four different valuations if it's available. Four valuations, three good ones plus Zillow. What do you think I think of Zillow? Okay, and it'll also tell you 97% of the properties available for sale across the United States. RSRmoney.com. Why today's housing inventory shows a crash is not on the horizon. You might remember the housing crash in 2008. Even if you didn't own a home at the time, if you're worried there's going to be a repeat of what happened back then, there's good news. The housing market is now, the housing market now is different from 2008. One important reason is there are not enough homes for sale. That means there's an undersupply, not even oversupply like the last time. For the market to crash, there would have to be too many houses for sale, but the data doesn't show that happening. Housing supply comes from three main sources. Homeowners deciding to sell their houses. Newly built homes. Distressed properties. Foreclosures or short sales. Let's take a look at today's housing inventory to understand why this is not like 2008. Homeowners deciding to sell their houses, although housing supply did grow compared to last year, it's still low. The current month's supply is below the norm. If you're watching us on ronsegalradio.tv, any of the socials or ABC News and Talk, AM 1490 video feed, you're seeing a graph. We like to put graphs on the screen. If you look at the latest data, green, compared to 2008, red, there's only about a third of that date available. So what does this mean? There just aren't enough homes available to make home values drop. To have a repeat of 2008, there'd need to be a lot more people selling their houses with very few buyers, and that's not happening right now. Newly built homes. People are also talking a lot about what's going on with newly built houses these days. And that might make you wonder if home builders are overdoing it. Another graph shows the number of houses built over the last 52 years. If you look, 14 straight years below the 52-year average. 14 years of underbuilding is a big part of the reason why inventory is so low today. Basically, builders haven't been building enough homes for years now, and that's created a significant deficit in supply. While the final blue bar on the graph shows that that's ramping up and is on pace to hit the long-term average, it won't suddenly create an oversupply. That's because there's too much of a gap to make up. Plus, builders are being intentional about not overbuilding homes like they did like they did during the bubble. Distressed properties, foreclosures, and short sales. The last place inventory can come from is distressed properties, including short sales and foreclosures. Back during the housing crisis, there was a flood of foreclosures due to lending standards that allowed many people to get a home that couldn't afford it. If you could fog a mirror, you were approved. Today, lending standards are much tighter, resulting in more qualified buyers and far fewer foreclosures. Another graph from the Federal Reserve to show how things have changed since the housing crash. The number of foreclosure filings is near all-time lows. The graph illustrates as lending standards got tighter and buyers were more qualified, the number of foreclosures started to go down. And in 2020, 2021, the combination of a moratorium on foreclosures and the forbearance program help prevent a repeat of the wave of foreclosures we saw back in 2008. The forbearance program was a game changer, giving homeowners options for things like loan deferrals and modifications they didn't have before. And data on the success of that program shows four out of every five homeowners coming out of forbearance are either paid in full or have worked out a repayment plan to avoid foreclosure. These are a few of the biggest reasons there won't be a wave of foreclosures coming to the market. What does this mean for you? Hey, back on foreclosures, just remember, when you hear the media say foreclosures are up 50%, if you go from two to three, that's up 50%, but doesn't mean you've got a lot. Inventory levels aren't anywhere near where they they need to be for prices to drop significantly and the housing market to crash. According to Bankrate, that isn't going to change anytime soon, especially considering buyer demand is still strong. The ongoing lack of inventory explains why many buyers still have little choice but to bid up prices. And it also indicates that the supply and demand equation simply won't allow a price crash in the near future. Bottom line, the market doesn't have enough available homes for a repeat of 2008 housing crisis, and there's nothing that suggests this will change anytime soon. 
That's why Housing Inventory tells us no crash on the horizon. Real-time real estate segment brought to you by rsrmoney.com.